This episode is sponsored by Wix. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash simple history to create a website today. Human Garden Gnome Weird Jobs in History In the 18th century, the wealthy English elite had a strange way of showing off their wealth to others. Today we know the garden gnome as a solid, small ornament made from clay or resin, but during this time, the role was played by a human being. More technically, they were known as ornamental hermits or garden hermits and were a fashionable trend for some time as a decoration and form of entertainment to guests. The very first of these garden hermits was said to be Francis of Paola, who lived in the caves of southern Italy on his father's estate during the 15th century. Francis would later be a confidant to King Charles VIII all the way till his death. In England, during from the mid-18th century to the early 19th century, wealthy aristocrats would build a small hut, cave or grotto at the end of their gardens and employ a hermit to live there. Solitude and meditation were highly valued, as was connection to nature, as the world became more industrialized. The hermit was also a celebration of melancholy, introspection and a somberness of the spirit. There were strict rules for these hermits, according to an advert in a newspaper by a Charles Hamilton. Firstly, the hermit had to look the part, which meant they would wear a camlet robe or druid-like costume. The hermit was provided with a grotto to live in and several props including optical glasses, a mat, an hourglass, a bible or classical book, and sometimes a skull, the symbol of mortality. They were not allowed to wash or clean themselves and never cut their hair, beard or nails. They were also not allowed to leave the estate during their employment. Some employers demanded that the hermits were not allowed to talk to guests who came to view him or to exchange words with the servants, effectively making them into a statue or ornament. And other employers wanted their garden hermits to speak to observing guests as part of the entertainment and to read poetry or serve wine. Perhaps because of these rules, these ornamental hermits were unreliable to the wealthy landowners who employed them. They became bad-tempered and did not obey their employers. Hamilton's first hermit ran away after three weeks and was found drunk at an inn. Some quit before their contract was over, forfeiting their pay. Human garden hermits were much more preferred to static ones. In 1830, Lord Hill had employed a human hermit called Father Francis at his home at Hawkstone in Shropshire. He was required to sit in a cave holding an hourglass and pass witty remarks with visitors that explored the garden. He was eventually replaced with a mechanical automation that simply nodded its head at passers-by, but they felt that it was not as good. Some estate owners who did not want a human hermit or couldn't afford to employ one simply had the hermitage there, which implied the hermit had just left. By the mid-19th century, garden hermits fell out of fashion, and it eventually evolved into the garden gnome we know today. People decorated their gardens with garden hermits, and you can design and decorate an awesome site with Wix. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash simple history to create a professional site regardless of your skill level. Wix has great features to bring your site to life, such as Wix videos, Wix Pro Gallery, Wix bookings, and solutions for all kinds of sites such as e-commerce, music, hotels, events, restaurants, and more. Build your own website and support the Simple History channel by going to wix.com forward slash go forward slash simple history or simply click the link in the description below to get started.